creative, logical, logical, creative. I like to do this when I'm being logical because I want to castle quick kingside. screaming out at me this but it's nothing major it's not doing anything yes it's got the annoying pin I can always bring my bishop back so I shouldn't really worry too much but it's attacking this pawn so we have to defend so I'll just bring the knight up this is beaten I'm trying to bring it down to the bare bones now of the things that concern me opponent's gone for a soft move so what does that mean to us in our head we're saying they've lost tempo in terms of developing a minor or major piece should we take advantage of that open up space for our own bishop to get some space here smallest of tempi that were up now as far as I'm concerned because of that pawn move that was a creative move preventing something that hasn't even occurred yet at all so it's like a risk mitigation type move for no real reason so I'm happy they've done that I'm trying to get a good understanding of my creative thought process and the logical thought process and need to kick it in. Looks like the opponent's left the game. I wonder if it's because they've made this soft move. <laughs> well, that'd be disappointing if they've finished, you know. That, um, pause it see if they come back well it looks like they've not come back um, I can claim victory I'm just hanging on just to see whether they're jumping back on but it doesn't look like they are which is a shame ok we'll quickly go on to another one then see what happens here quickly as the case may be what's happening to the players lately okay playing as black let's push through the center yeah let's defend as normal Okay, so a bit of an aggressive starter, so they like to get things done, they're in there, they're in the action, let's just grab, okay, let's see how much stamina they've got. Ordinarily like to take this knight off the board, don't really like dancing, bring this knight up and push his pawns down. I'm not into fancy today, just take it off the board, it's there. Okay, and as you know we've been working on this move so we're pushing the pawn just nice and steady. All of this is pretty normalish at the minute. Knights come through. I would say with that knight coming through there, then he's lost a little bit of steam nothing major but from the attacking position they had at the start it's um, kind of fizzled for a second let's just bring the knight here which is allowing us a little bit of breathing space
Okay, so he's back on attacking, but I think that is a little bit too late to the party in my eyes. Because the tempo we're taking here, we can go old school and attack here like we we do like doing that move. Could bring the bishop out. I'm actually a small piece attacking a higher piece. I think I've done that in one of the recent games. I feel quite at home when I do do that move because I've been practicing that other new move for quite a while now. That one feels at home as well. So there's a few things to fall back on and all based from evaluation of the games that I had played previously. So that smallest of tempi might not be obvious on the on the page but I have to believe that I feel I'm the smallest of their movements up towards actually gaining the smallest of advantages to try and build that advantage up as best possible. Just give that a little touch here just to see what he wants to do. And he's jumping back, so again, losing that sort of momentum, really, in terms of, well, okay, if you're going to take it, take it, but let's just see what you really want to do. So he's having to move his piece two or three times, this one piece. Which isn't really good for, let's take these glasses off. Well, I'm on the other screen. <laughs> okay, so what have we got here? Yep, so some may say, well, you've disturbed your king side pawns. So in essence the opponent's winning because you've got no protection for your king but on the, excuse me on the plus side for myself his pieces aren't really developed mine aren't developed either but mine are more advanced up the board in terms of my pawns and they are supported at the moment so that's a blessing looks scrappy but that's my defensible rationale his pieces are separated they're not working together as far as I can see I've got to look at my own pieces as well. Am I working together or can I get mine working together faster than the opponent? So let's develop the bishop, a nice diagonal towards the king area. Obviously it's tantalizing here, but we're looking to pressure the king <laughs> as we speak. <laughs> so it's looking to pressure the king area but also weakening the king area because now this area is going to be free for a later maneuver so we can bring the bishop back now idea of sitting here oh he's got a two on one but that's a bit urgent that's a bit urgent because he's opened himself up and they don't actually realize it yet so this is where the magic comes in you have to take your time pace it so his bishop is attacking our bishop he's got a pawn but he's pawn hunted and he's not in a good shape in the back so slow development either to here to here just to um, put pressure on their queen so I think we can do that quite nicely getting our position ready towards their king area like we mentioned before pieces aren't really working together and to actually do an attack when you're not in a good shape see this is why he's not taking the bishop because he's gone and castled yep so to actually attack when you're not in a good state 
doesn't really leave you in a good state okay so we can now actually just take this bishop off the board and watch what transpires rook takes okay so they've gone eager beaver in but we're talking about gaining better position on the board key thing for me is knowing that you don't have to go rushing here because now the king's side has gone king can come here and attack the rook because his rook isn't linked up yet so he'll be rushing to get that linked up so it gives us time to just press onto the rook because the rook is attacking and they're moving way too fast this is a 18 minute 10 second game but I'm happy they're moving fast because that's where they're not really utilizing the full benefit of their brain brain power so I'm happy so as we mentioned in our quick monologuing just attacking the rook now because he doesn't have the bishop linked up at this moment so he may bring the bishop here so that the rook can then link up as we mentioned before so it's all simple stuff but those tempo wins they're plus one at the moment but that was a greedy munch from a bad position so they captured a piece but their position for the later part of the game hasn't left them in good stead so those are things that i'm trying to practice for myself is oh well yeah there's a pawn there my queen can take it but is it going to improve my position really so the bishop's moved it's moved somewhere it's moved off of the line so that he can link up his rooks so as we said we're just going to keep it simple so we'll be able to own the file for a bit well for a second or two king takes so we'll bring the king out into the open so we could go and attack the king but there's other options that we can pursue yeah so if we did go and attack his knight can always jump in here but i'm going to go for simple and just attack the king for now we've got many options we've got pawns pushing up here we've got pawns pushing up here or here so there's those are things that we can work on so his king's moved out of the way let me see let me see let me see sure the knight can actually do some serious damage but i might leave that in my back pocket Mm -hmm. Yes, could come here to go there. Could go there. Bring the knight here. I'm liking the knight going here because it's going to disrupt the king. So if we go there, he's probably going to drop his pawn. But I'm also freeing up this pawn a little bit, aren't I? But I don't want to block my knight. Let's just try and squeeze in here for now, see if they forget themselves. So I won't do any more monologuing now, I'll just... Um, see if it pans out from our earlier findings of that pawn grab yep so it does drop the pawn don't want to keep the knight there obviously down down tab the bishop up 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 and up going to touch onto the knight anyway so we don't want the knight on the rim really if he hadn't have done the pawn move we would have been in but he has done so we'll bring it down no harm or foul because the thing is it wasn't in this position in the first place so we've gone out to come back in maybe but the bishop can take but i don't think the bishop will take it anyway we can do a bit of a merry dance still got that on the rook so 
so plenty of time <coughs> Okay, it's looking to trade down now because he's a pawn up but this is one of the things that I'm trying to practice for myself is that if I've gone greedy munching for a pawn and I've realistically, realistically looked at the position of the board and I found out that it wasn't the best I'm not going to go looking trading down so obviously this player believes that they're in a better position so they can go and trade down but I believe that they're not it's the smallest of detail else I would say yes you're a pawn up you might as well trade down so what he's going to do is going to find out subliminally that there's a bit of an issue with said maneuvers let's just get the king up a little bit probably drop in here for some reason maybe to come back up here to attack the pawn but he's going to have an issue uh, i would have said moving the knight might have been appropriate but i can't speak for the opponent like i said they're going to find that the type of position that they have is not going to give them the best benefits I'm going to push here he's got a poor majority at the minute we've got pieces that are helping us support that majority maybe we can reduce it down a little bit with a better position on the board so this is the deeper thinking because this rook is not even in the game it's taken a while to get into the game and it's got a knight stuck in the middle not really targeting anything and he's got these poor majorities that aren't being supported by any of his key pieces so this is the, these are the it's like three things there like three tempo type maneuvers that needed to be in place before he went for the trade with the bishop he may prove me wrong she may prove me wrong but i have to believe that that is the case <coughs> in this game King's coming down to attack a measly pawn. And the rook is still stuck in the corner. Yay, yay, yay. Let's just grab this pawn here. I'm hoping I'm going to prove my, to myself that it's um, okay and the position is fine. Because I'll feel and well i won't feel stupid because i know for a fact this rook has it's a bit late the tempo for it is not fast enough so like we mentioned with our arrows earlier knight was either coming here or going to here now the bishop's gone we can mosey on down and the king has gone greedy munching so again this poor player is going greedy munching believing that grabbing material is actually winning the game which is a shame because it isn't <laughs> oh dear okay so going to move the rook across putting a check on the king oh through the king is the pawn here and the king is stuck in the center of the board so yeah, i feel a little bit mean actually but um well we're not winning at this moment in time so there's no point in monologuing about anything but this rook i don't understand why this rook hasn't got into the game so i'm going to take this pawn as we said nice and steady now the rook's coming but it's defending a piece it's not there's no activity to this rook so ooh. And the rook was defending this piece here wasn't it i mean the issue could be that if we did take this his rook comes here looking to own the file here but the pawn is protecting that's protecting uh, protecting that square so we're just grabbing back these two pawns that they had as advantages all because the king is in the middle the knight's in the middle 
the bishop took a pawn early on with bad position so this is all education for me so that at least I know what has actually happened in this game okay so the poor rook I feel sorry for their rook so we could come and attack this pawn we could push our pawn up we could attack the king but then we don't really want it chasing us around this is a safe haven really because of this here i think we pawn majority could challenge these pawns now well this pawn it's basically saying as well you might want to move your knight <laughs> the knight is in the center of the board it's not actually doing anything hmm Let's attack here all common sense moves it looks like to me that this knight I'm still fearful of forks but this pawn is protecting so if we did go there the pawn would be able to take it let's just come and attack this pawn keep it simple and it's now deciding to come down to the danger path but there's nothing i don't believe there's anything there is there he they, they can't come here because the rook will, the pawn will take can't go there but he can come here and attack my knight then we can come back up here so then he can't attack our king but he can come and attack the pawn but then the rook's defending um, so then he can come back up and attack these pawns interesting situation mm -hmm. but all of that is about three moves behind isn't it so we can take he comes down to the bottom we have options we can attack his knight but i don't want to lose the knight so we probably come here attack the rook and that's about it isn't it then after then he's just chasing the pawns on, on the side or whichever side so taking the pawn doesn't seem to be a problem So this opponent's taking turns in the pieces not moving the rook stayed for the full most part of that game stuck in the corner here now the knight's just that's uh, sticking in the in middle here with the king so we're gonna have to just mosey on up aren't we don't really want to ignore the pawns but we do have two pawns ourselves in there and plus our rook can go behind any of them <laughs> I just think he's nice just sitting waiting to just come here if we push what's the problem with that it's no problem is there <laughs> well, I'm just going to push and see if there's an issue to move the king I know I've done this before where I've done the narrative I says oh, I've got to watch this square or I've got to watch a piece and and then I've not actually done it and totally forgotten all about it and then end up in the position that I says you need to be be aware of so the creative brain worked it's just that the logical brain ignored the creativeness <laughs> So 
So it does have a pass pawn in the middle of the board. So again, I suppose that in a way could be pressure. You could just gently push it down, you know, making its way down and start pressurizing the king somehow. Because he does have like the knight coming here, putting a check on the king and the knight. So I would have to take and then his rook will probably take well i don't have to take but you know this is the picture that looks like it's <laughs> just as we were talking about it oh dear <laughs> oh my word so yeah it comes down and gets the pawns but i think these pawns are going to be kind of fast too fast unless of course he brings his rook across somehow so like i say a bit late to the party now it's moving really fast and i'm not going to move fast i'm just going to take my time as usual because they took their time thinking about that particular move so why shouldn't i just let's push these up now yeah so they're moving real fast like that's going to actually speed up the position of their pieces on the board our pawns are, pr are realistically going to get promoted unless of course he does some sort of sacrifice with his um rook but somehow yeah yeah the position's not he can move as fast as he wants it's not it's not going to improve the position and that's the type of thing we we're talking about earlier in that grabbing a pawn does not always improve your position for the later stages obviously i'm defending it with my rook i'm just seeing if there's anything better just a gentle thing here because it'll be annoying to them now you know they've, they've sorted a plan they're almost there they're almost going to get their pieces um, promoted but his king's gonna have to get into the game i can get my king up here take captures yeah well he's following everything i'm saying because that's the common sense thing isn't it yeah. did that just make a noise then? Okay. oh and the king's up now these types of endings can go can go wrong i believe we're in a very good position but they can go wrong so i just need to be mindful if i bring the pawn here then it's blocking off the king from actually attacking the, the rook so again this supporting aspect with these two pawns is a bit too lethal now they'll probably consider trying to come down and get these pawns because he's got two pawns against one pawn so that's where he's going to be oh God, i can get it i can get it and the sacrifice of the rook is what i was talking about where they'll probably peel off this pawn because it's so highly developed up the board that they're going to just try and squeeze one of these down so the rook will probably take the pawn rook takes but our rook can still get across in time and i think their king is too far up the board so there'll probably be one pawn that's left one being white here and one pawn being left there and this king will be in the center but his rook will be off the board so we need to save a bit of time so that we can do a rook and king ending that's how confident i am about it that's potentially what's going to happen there'll be a rook sacrifice getting this one off because he's got poor majority these two are going to start blasting down looking to get some victory i'm then going to have to squirm my rook across and then take the remaining pawn off so they've gone for a long think again I'll pause it because it looks like they oh it's me it might go he's moved shit i didn't even see that they moved oh my word god how long ago did they move <laughs> okay so they've moved the rook so we can just as we say support now this pawn coming up and there's no stopping he's gonna have to do an um a, a sacrifice 
so they're moving quick just to make to try and make me move quick and make me make a mistake and that's something that I think you have to learn it you have to experience it yourself and and what sort of you're comfortable with but what I've seen in these types of positions before when the opponent who is in a not a well they're in a baddish position they then move fast and then the op opponent who's in a good position moves fast as well and I've done this before in over the board games online games um, and fallen for it I've moved really fast thinking oh god I need to move quick and then I've ended up in a bad position so I don't think that this is happening today so there's going to be a sacrifice of the rook like we said because obviously we're going to be getting promoted here And I think if you've got enough time, have a look at the, the the beauty of what you're trying to create. I know people aren't interested in beautiful games of chess, it's a matter of who wins and who loses, yeah. But I think the more you can appreciate, as we said now, these pawns are going to make the way down. Mm, I did think he was going to um, sacrifice his rook though, but that's okay. He will be sacrificing it now we need to get it out of the way let's uh, just grab this baby and it's all falling into line as to what we said so we'll capture this pawn here with the rook in fact there's no pawn there and then they've resigned okay so that was an interesting game but i think the key things were definitely have a look at the analysis on that whoa that went bright Whew. Analysis, analysis, analysis. Do, 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 do. Here's my board. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, okay, let's have a look. I mean, they might possibly be winning in that position from the what the computer might say but in my head um, taking the pawn was not the best because of the way that they were positioned so it's not they're actually winning out here look at this wow wow is it because of the neat pawn structure look at that they're absolutely winning there's me monologuing <laughs> coming out with a bishop there whoa look at that <laughs> look at that oh dear i wouldn't change anything that i did so wow that's massive and then they captured the pawn and that's when i said that was not a very good position good um what's happened here oh he's done a really report analysis thing what 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 was happening what's the scores and those four inaccuracies one mistake two blunders seven inaccuracies one mistake three blunders yeah so i'm on the board there yep yeah, okay obviously they must have been doubting that they or maybe they've genuinely come on to have a look to see where they need to improve yeah okay nice one right interrupted my floor there dude look at that they're absolutely smashing me here and how confident was i during the game like i say i wouldn't change anything um my story was my story I still believe their position is not good um, definitely not good enough for taking a taking a pawn with the bishop it didn't to me appear to have any good foundation because these pieces weren't developed yes my pieces weren't either but I felt that there was what's the word now better combinations that I could actually instill especially on the center here um, with this file I've got pieces already developed in that area so wow look at that <laughs> it's about three moves away from finishing the game up there for white okay so then they moved across wow there's no there's no time i'm actually winning here look at that that is impressive so we captured 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 oh 
but it doesn't look devastating if you have a look at their position on the board and you look at the gauge bar the gauge bar is out and out thrashing us but their position on the board genuinely is not scary i'm looking at it now it still isn't scary i'm still of the opinion the bishop is blocking the rook's development so they're about three moves behind here so i'm still confident of what we did wow but look at that. i didn't know that it was looking that bad crikey so then and then we captured oh pretty simple straightforward stuff yeah so then we attack the king yeah so where was the danger zones from why it's not actually showing the danger zone it's just showing that why it is better is it because of the plus one you know the plus one pawn but the plus one pawn wouldn't give this massive advantage so somewhere along the lines the opponent didn't utilize the positional play the advantage of positional play that this the engine is actually saying it has or is it just the material it can't just be the one pawn was it two pawns was it two pawns at this stage one two three four five six seven one two three four five six uh no it's just one there okay so we'll bring the knight back and the bishop comes down it's got a question mark on that at no point in this game am i actually in an advantage <laughs> is this the biggest swindle ever my giddy aunt. oh and we start to creep in here but like i said um there was no fear whatsoever within any of the moves that i made and there was no way made i felt like the opponent was in an advantage in such a scale like the um, computer showing <laughs> okay so i've had a few games like that really though you know so this is why I'm, I'm not changing what I'm doing, I'm learning from the evaluation but I'm putting my own slant in the game so that I understand what I am actually doing and it's for the opponent to play like a computer then you know, if they're going to start getting advantages against me you know, so if I'm playing against a genuine person then majority of the time they ain't going to play like a computer and they're not going to take advantage of those massive advantages like that where it doesn't look advantageous on the board to the human eye so that's what that's what builds me with confidence in that sense and so we're coming down we had defensible, defensible rationales for all of these positions here now we can go and capture some pawns and now it's a draw type thing um, at this stage I'm not thinking it's a draw at all I'm thinking there's a there's a definite win here the position on the board is really comfortable for us and it's just showing as a draw at the moment so, <laughs> so what do we have to do to prove that there's a win okay so he starts pushing down um, to me I didn't need to prove a draw uh, a win because it was already set in stone in my head I, I, I believed the opponent's position wasn't very um, in depth in terms of giving them an advantage so we pushed up and this is where we start making advantage now let's see where it was the opponent's mistake somewhere wasn't it uh, so me attacking this pawn was not a good thing and then he should have come across and blocked the pawn no Oh, they're very delicate moves, aren't they? Okay, so we start pushing through. Knight comes down. Yeah, we were happy with this one. Was that knight? <laughs> in fact, we were talking, weren't we? And then they just made the move. Um, and yeah, that's more like a humanistic move, you know, to say, well, I'm going to get the pieces off the board. I'm going to try and get these pawns down here. I'm going to try and get these pawns, whip these off before he gets these up here. So that makes sense. But we worked out that that really was giving us the creme de la creme at that stage so we could just push up nice and steadily and at that point there the opponent resigned so yeah that was good and absolutely shocked at the evaluation bar on that so yeah and it's all good we, le we live and learn and like I said I, I wouldn't change anything that I did in the game 
I have my defensible rationale for all of the moves that I made during that game based upon the character that the opponent was basically you know, showing on the board so that helped drive me through <clears throat> so I mean yeah um, what more can I say <laughs> I'm happy with the character that I am um, I found out and played against shocked at the evaluation but the opponent didn't take advantage of those evaluations